Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Art Kirsch and I are with the lovely Dr. Liz Lister, our font of knowledge. Dr. Liz, I, I love these sessions because I learn so much. Uh, I have a question for Thank you. I have a question for today because uh, uh, Dr. Liz, you, you uh, in addition to speaking with our audience, uh, uh, go to a lot of conferences. Uh, you have a blog, uh, which I see all the time, particularly on LinkedIn. That's yeah. where I, I get to see that quite a bit. And one of the uh, more recent ones that intrigued me is uh, uh, you were talking about uh, uh, doctors and keeping up with uh, 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 medicine, I guess, uh, with their profession. They go, go to medical school and they get out and they open up uh, a practice and uh, you get the feeling that some of them may or may not be getting uh, all the up-to-date information. Maybe they're just overwhelmed in their practice, whatever it is. Uh, can you talk to our audience more about that and uh, maybe what's important and, uh, uh, and for them to know and how we can know, is our doctor really up on all that's important in medicine. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, it's really a challenge because I remember back to my residency training, I was trained in a very small program in Los Angeles where the attending staff, most of them had trained in the same program, whether it was a few years before or decades before, and they, it was just this very tight knit community. And so they would stay on after finishing their residency. So a lot of my people who taught me in my OBGYN residency were trained in the same program in the same hospital over wow. the decades prior. Yeah, it was, it was very interesting. It was really good from a clinical standpoint, but that was in the early nineties. The pace of information expansion keeps speeding up. Sure. And as that pace keeps increasing, unfortunately, there's studies that are showing that the longer a doctor is in practice, the further they fall behind with latest information and technology and implementing it in their practice with their patients. Well, that, that sounds to me very understandable, not laudable, but understandable, because we know that the pace of technology and science is just incredible these days. It, uh, Somebody said it doubles every two years or something like that. I don't, but that's right. It's a a lot of information. So, so as a professional, how do you keep up, Dr. Liz? Well, there are a lot of ways that a lot of doctors either don't take the time or don't have the time. So there are journals, there are email lists that I'm on, there are conferences. Uh, sometimes even podcasts, but again, that has to be really carefully curated because anybody can can do that these days. So a lot of people position themselves as medical experts. So it's not that easy to find out what is really the, the latest. Uh, another challenge in doctors implementing the latest technology is our current, in, is two things from our current model. One is the insurance side, which Treatments that have been in place longer are going to be on people's insurance versus newer, possibly well-tested, but not in use for all that long. The insurance model still will treat those as experimental or investigational, even when the data is really, really clear that those approaches and treatments are beneficial. So that's one big challenge. The other is in the pharmaceutical industry. So information, for example, with natural supplements, good data, well-studied information that doesn't integrate with the pharmaceutical. I've got the pharmaceutical, the doctor, and the insurance company triangle yep. is not going to be as in the forefront for the doctor's attention and learning. These are some of the some of the big challenges. Sure, and and also information from the pharmaceutical company, it's not unfair to 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 look at it at a skew, be a little suspicious of it. They're in business, you know. Um, right. So right, and 
yeah, you got to take that with a grain of salt. But nevertheless, yeah. they they have millions of dollars spent on science every year. Yeah, yeah and there, there, have been, there have been a lot of uh, um, uh, highlighted cases where, uh, and I think new restrictions, particularly uh, here in California, uh, of uh, restrictions on pharmaceutical reps, uh, right. uh, because they found that the studies have shown that these reps are getting paid for how many more prescriptions are being written for their drugs in their assigned area. And that doesn't, oh, there's that's, no question. Yeah. that's not necessarily bad, but on the other side, uh, the the altruism of how good the drugs are versus uh, uh, the rec recompensing the uh, pharmaceutical rep uh, yeah. comes into question. So are the doctors getting good information? Is it just that they're being sold a good uh, bill of goods? I think there's less of that today, but I'm sure that still exists. So how do, do we as a consumer, uh, mm. without insulting our doctor, uh, get a sense of whether or not they're up to date uh, with modern things that could help us. Yeah, let's face it. Yeah. No doctor wants to hear a patient tell them what drug they need. I right? know, I know. Well, you know, it's very important that, I think it's reasonable to ask a doctor, where are they going to learn? What, what conferences do they like to go to? Uh, how do they go? You know, if you ask it in a conversational way and not a confrontational way, where do you go get your medical education credits? Uh, but the, for example, in California, what you said is absolutely true as far as the reps. I think personally, it's gotten a little bit extreme. However, I understand the argument against, uh, I mean, at this point, the reps can't leave us pens or post-it notes or anything that really has the name of their particular medication. So I appreciate the reps who still take the time to come and visit and make sure that I'm aware of their medicine that they're representing so that I remember it in my arsenal and my toolbox. So I think that's okay. Um, but in any case, but I, but I do understand the idea. I get it. I get it. It, it did go way far too far to the extreme. Uh, really, it was just before I went into practice when the drug companies were taking doctors on cruises on yachts. And, and I mean, that just has nothing to do really with patient care. <laughs> okay. So in any case, so what can patients do? I, I say just to ask questions um, when doctors keep up and also to be aware when we renew our license, we attest that we have completed continuing medical education. I don't deliver babies or do office gynecology at this point, but I keep up my board certification. I do think that board certification makes a difference. Uh, and I keep that up so that I keep up to date in terms of the knowledge. I keep up my membership in my professional society. If someone wants to do research, that's not hard to check on the licensing board, on the medical association boards. And uh, and also just, again, as usual, the usual tools for the patient is preparing in advance. If someone wants to discuss a study or a finding or a new medication, they're welcome to send me a link ahead of time. And then I can answer it when we are having our time together. Sometimes I'll do it afterwards if they bring something up. But uh, if they want to ask me about it, send me the information ahead of time. Doctors who are not open to that are... That's not okay in my in my view. I think doctors need to understand that uh, the pace of information is going faster than than we can keep up. And if our patients are going to help us learn about what they're hearing about, to me, that's a positive. Yeah, you know, Doctor Liz, the the world. I don't have to tell you this. The world of healthcare and medicine has changed over the last uh, fifteen years or so more rapidly. Um, than ever before. Is that because and of, doc, one of the doc, things that Dr. Is, Google? Is that because of Dr. Google? <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Google? No, I was yes, thinking and, about. Uh, I was thinking about my healthcare system. Uh, I'm my doctor is part of a huge uh, plan. I don't know what they call it, but it's it's a, a healthcare plan. They own, I don't know, six hospitals. They have a thousand doctors as part of the system, um, and so my my GP is really an internist. He's a specialist. And if if he needs another opinion, he just sends me to another doctor within the same system 
who is a specialist in that thing. So I've got, literally, I made a list of my doctors the other day. I've got six doctors. Now, I don't see them all, all the time. You know, I've got my one guy who's my GP, but I've got these six doctors. They're all specialists. And, and I think that's kind of a, well, I know it's a trend in medicine, but not everybody is part of a large group the way I am. And right. uh, I think I think if you're part of a, there, let's face it, you know this, there are no individual doctor practices anymore. You have to be part of a group. Um, so there's at least two or three doctors in your group. That's true. Mm. And, uh, you know, if they don't, if they can't, um, refer you to a specialist um, once in a while when you need it. I, I think that's a, a sign that they might not be up to date. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Unfortunately, there's been studies that show that doctors can be as much as 17 years behind. Oh, that my. doctors still, if specialists or generalists, that they tend to do what they were taught. My residency, I started my residency 32 years ago. Wow. And I remember the techniques that I was taught very, very early on. And it's a, incumbent on me to keep up to date and learn what has been, come, what has come along as an advance in all of this time. All right. And I'm, that, that's what I'm saying is that there's, there's this big delay between new information coming out and actually being implemented into practice. So I do not begrudge anybody their Google search. I like to be in, I like my body of knowledge to be appreciated. However, uh, as uh, one of the, a, a doctor that I admire, she says, I have the body of knowledge, but you have the knowledge of your body. And there are advances in medicine. I go to my anti-aging conference. It was three days of nonstop conferences. And I'm only one person. I was in the sessions that I was in, but I just got in the mail the other day my thumb drive with all of the lectures. So I'm very excited to go back to hear some of the ones that I couldn't attend because I was in another room. Lots of interesting information, a lot of fun topics that we cover here. So I'm always excited to share latest uh, cutting edge information with our audience here. I'd like to ask um, uh, or, uh, for confirmation one way or the other, because our audience is uh, diverse, uh, not only uh, in, in backgrounds and, and issues that they face, but also they're throughout the United States. And actually, we, we know we have uh, some people overseas who uh, uh, tune in from time to time. Uh, the medical certification and recertification is basically, as I understand it, a state thing. So that uh, while, if that's true, California may be more stringent on taking uh, courses to keep up certifications, or maybe it's only the board certification and not just the normal certification. But is it if it's different for every state, then uh, uh, it, it could go from they don't care, just send in the money to. Uh, you need to do certain things in order to be recertified. Can you uh, tell us about that and what we should yes, be wearing? Yes, absolutely. Of? Thank you. Well, the board certification is national. Hmm. The board exams are national boards. The licensing is state by state. To your point, the requirements can vary. Here in California, it is 25 continuing medical education credits per year to, re, to be able to renew my license. And again, one of the reasons that the, those of us that we have to be careful as patients is that it's voluntary. Okay, now I could lose my license if I lied about using, about the credits that I got. Okay, so that's not worth it, all right? But it is an honor system. I do not necessarily, I mean, for me, it's actually quite easy because I renew my, my OBGYN boards. I do it online each year. And that's way more credits than I need for renewing my license. So for me, it serves a dual purpose, right? But it's not difficult to do. I get quizzes online that count for continuing medical education credits. It's not hard to do, but it is a voluntary basis. Even the conferences, 
it's voluntary. They hold these medical conferences at fun places, ski resorts, Hawaii, Las Vegas, all, all kinds of fun places to go. And it's voluntary. No one's watching me to make sure that I go to a certain number of lectures. So it's very important to have a good sense of your doctor uh, and, and have a, another way that I think is a good way to tell is when you bring something up with a doctor, if they get defensive, that's not a good sign, <laughs> mm. good in point. my opinion. Okay, because if you say, oh, well, I read about this, and you're not saying it in a, in a confrontational type of way, and, and if, they, if they say, oh, that's interesting, I'll look into that, then that's what, that's what we want. If they say, oh, that's ridiculous, that's not true. <laughs> okay, so I see a, a, a big takeaway then here is that uh, to make sure that, uh, and I guess a GP is not board, is there, uh, for family medicine, is there a board certification? Oh, yes. Okay, so, Absolutely. so uh, yeah. board certification, no matter where you are in the U.S., would be a good sign that uh, your, your physician is uh, somewhat up to date, uh, or more so than, more so than uh, somebody who uh, just has a, uh, an MD after their name and, and doesn't uh, have any board certifications on the wall. Correct, correct. And to that point, there's a medical doctor, there's doctor of osteopathy. There's there's different initials after the name, but the boards are still going to be uh, equivalent. The same boards, same yeah. board exam, DO, MD. So that's important to note too. And also uh, uh, going back to something that uh, John had said before, I belong to a, a small uh, group practice. Although they uh, they when I had uh, uh, melanoma, they got me to. Uh, uh, UCI Medical Center, and they took care of me. So they they are in touch with one another. But there is a small practice where they have uh, dermatologists, they have other things. So that while it's not, I think, a group like yours, it seems that if it's a good group, then you have access to a lot of board certified doctors who are easily going to push you from one place to the other uh, if you need services, uh, and have uh, people that. You can feel comfortable that you don't have to go out and have to make new appointments with with a strange group that won't see your background and your your medical records because right. they share the records. So, uh, I, I, although I know that there's some people talk negatively about those kind of plans, and I don't happen to be in one of those. Uh, I know a lot of people, including the, uh, some of my kids and and you, obviously John, who are very happy with them. If you build up confidence in your, I guess it comes down to that individual physician that you see and the, the confidence that you have in that person. I think yep. things are moving mm -hmm. overall mm -hmm. in a good direction. I think in these larger groups, and even in smaller groups, if they're using electronic medical records, which mm -hmm. we're all being uh, encouraged and in some cases required to use for certain sure. types of prescribing, mm -hmm. what that does is it helps coordinate information. So it helps all of the information that we have be applied. So for example, if there's new information that contributes to a particular diagnosis that I submit or that a patient of mine submits, then I will receive that information. Mm -hmm. And that's good. That's useful. That's yeah. a good way of using computers. Uh, the way I heard it put recently by an author is turning artificial intelligence into intelligent assistance mm. good and i think that's coming i think that's happening yeah. but you know what they you know what the bottom line is right gentlemen for the doctor that people should should go to do tell is you, you, you well you you want to never go to a doctor whose office plants have died <laughs> everybody knows that yeah okay i guess we do Right. Or who doesn't That's, have, maybe who, who doesn't have office plants. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Liz, this has been great. Uh, good perspective on uh, our health care providers, I think. So good information. Appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Wonderful. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube,
and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.